Hello everyone. I recently got hold of a Quantasylum QA403 24-bit audio analyzer. For those of you who are not familiar with these kind of tools, they are measurement equipment especially designed to measure frequency response, distortion, noise and other audio parameters. They are used during development of audio products to verify that the design fulfills certain key requirements. They can also be used in manufacturing to check that the products that roll off the production line fulfills the specifications. The QA403 is simply put a purpose-built audio interface that is connected to a PC with a special software using an isolated USB 2.0 connection. All inputs and outputs are balanced and they can operate within a wide signal range. The analyzer arrives without any cables or accessories. This makes sense since the cables and connectors are very specific for the application, or how it's set up in your lab anyway. The software installer is downloaded from GitHub and does not require any licenses or registration, which is nice. But it will of course only work when you have a Quant Asylum product connected. I must admit that I had a bit of a struggle to get hold of a suitable USB cable, and I had to buy a set of BNC shorting plugs before I could do anything with it. So it would actually be nice if these were included from the start. But anyway, let's get started by doing some basic measurements of the audio analyzer itself to get an idea of the performance figures that we can expect from it. Our first test will be a total harmonic distortion or THD measurement. We will connect the positive left channel output to the left channel input and place a shorting plug in the left negative input since we are not using a balanced connection. The measurement is done by sending out a 1 kHz pure sine wave and measuring the peaks at the harmonics. The measured THD can be presented as a dB or percent value. THD plus noise is calculated in a similar way, but in that case the measured noise is also included in the calculation. The next measurement will be the noise floor, or self-noise, of the analyzer, and for this we measure the noise level after we have shorted all the input jacks using the shorting plugs. The measured result will be an RMS value in dBV, which means that it's relative to 1 volt RMS. For noise measurements, it may also make sense to apply A weighting. This is a frequency response adjustment that you can apply to a measurement to get a result that is more similar to how human hearing would perceive this noise. Okay, so our first victim will be the output module. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is a project that I completed a while ago and it would be interesting to see what the performance of this module looks like. The module itself converts Eurorack audio levels to balance line levels and it also has a headphones amplifier built in that is designed for studio headphones. But before we start we need to establish the voltage levels for our setup. The output module converts from Eurax level to professional line levels, but since the signal generator uses levels in dBV, the easiest way to get this value is to use an online calculator. So 5V peak from Eurorack will be around 11dBV and plus 4dBU for professional line levels is around 1.8dBV. Ok, so let's connect everything. The input jack of the output module has the right channel normal to the left channel, so I will only connect the left output from the audio analyzer. The output module itself has balanced outputs, which will be connected directly to the balanced inputs of the audio analyzer. I had to make a suitable cable between the quarter inch TRS jacks and the BNC inputs. The gain knob is set in the middle position since this will give an output level of a plus 4 dBU. Alright, I think we are ready to do some measurements and we will start with the balance line outputs and the frequency response plot. We will start by selecting the frequency response generator and set the output level to 11 dBV since this will simulate Eurorack full signal level. Next we set the FFT length to 128 kilo samples and we can start the measurement. As you can see the curves are almost flat, 
But let's zoom in a little bit to have a look at the individual curves. The yellow line is the left channel and the red is the right channel. And by placing two cursors on top of each other we can see that the difference is around 0.3 dB between the channels. The roll-off at high and low frequencies are both well within the normal minus 3 dB limit. So this looks really good I think. The next measurement is a THD and THD plus noise measurement. We start by setting the signal generator level to 11 dBV. And at the top of the screen we can see the different readings for left and right channel respectively. A THD at 0.0004% and a THD plus noise at minus 100 dB is really good. And I'm happy with that result. The final measurement is the background noise level and for this we need to disconnect the signal generator and use the built-in shorting switch in the input jack to get silence on the input. We will measure the RMS level and we end up at 100 dBV unweighted. We can also select a weighted measurement to get a reading that is more like what we would hear. For white noise, where the energy is distributed evenly over the frequency range, this will normally improve the numbers a little bit. But be aware that a weighted curve has a small gain around 2 to 3 kHz, where the human hearing has its most sensitive range. In our case, the figure got a couple of dBs better, and we land at minus 103 dBV a weighted. Okay, so the next set of measurements will be on the headphones amplifier output. And we will need to decide on a suitable dummy load to simulate the drivers in the headphones. The output module is designed with studio or DJ headphones in mind. And they tend to have an impedance of 60 ohm or higher. So I will use a 60 ohm dummy load for this setup. The first measurement is frequency response at the maximum output level. And the frequency response looks very familiar, I think. The frequency response curves are the same and the difference in gain between the channels are in the same range as for the line outputs. The THD measurement is maybe a little bit more interesting. And at full volume, the THD is 0.002, which is approximately five times higher than the line output. We also see that the output power is more than 100 milliwatts, which may be on the limit of what the headphone drivers can handle. The sound pressure levels would probably also be very high at maximum volume setting. That's why we are using a dummy load here. A more reasonable setting of the volume control would be to turn it down to the middle position. And now we can see that the output power is reduced to 13 milliwatts and the THD figures improves a little bit. The final measurement is to check the background noise at maximum volume. And we basically end up with the same figures as we got for, as for the line level outputs. Minus 101 dBV unweighted and minus 104 dBV A weighted. Alright, I'm just starting to explore the QA403. And there are a lot of more measurements and automation features that I haven't touched upon yet. But I can promise that I will cover these in future videos. I hope that you have found this video interesting and if you are shopping for an affordable audio analyzer I can really recommend this product. I will use it a lot in my upcoming projects. For example the modular audio mixer that I'm working on at the moment. But that's it for today. See you soon again and thank you for watching.